Hi, I'm Stephanie Hutchins, life coach and owner of Seratness Life and author of Transformation After Trauma, Embracing Post-Traumatic Growth. Whenever I post about you know, transformation after trauma or embracing post-traumatic growth about, you know, different posts about these concepts on social media, I always get either comments directly on the post or people messaging me, asking me, is it possible? And what they're asking me is, is it possible to transform after trauma? And, you know, because I, I know that place because of all of the traumatic experiences I've had in my life, I understand that place of hopelessness. I understand that place, that very dark place where you don't feel it's possible to ever move forward, let alone actually transform after trauma. And so I, I want to talk a bit more about this idea of transformation after trauma and post-traumatic growth in this video. And to do that, I want to talk a little bit about my background and teaching about the human body and a little bit of why I chose the business name that I did, because it's, it completely ties in with this concept of post-traumatic growth. So I'm going to take this opportunity to share um, some images with you. So give me just a moment. Okay, so let me make my screen big. <laughs> okay, so again, my business name is Serotonous Life, and most people are like, why, why did you choose this word that most people have never heard of and don't even know how to pronounce um, for your business name? Most people think it was a really bad move, but I was a, a biology professor for 12 years, and so I couldn't help but tie in my love of science when I was developing my practice. And so um, this concept of serotony is, is very significant to me personally, but very significant to the mission of my practice. And so my, the mission of my business is to spread this message that post-traumatic growth is possible. And, and we can see evidence of it in multiple facets of life. And one example of where we can see it in life is with serotonous cones. Okay. So in my logo, this is a pine cone. Okay. And serotonous cones only open in response to an environmental trigger like fire. Okay. Now, most people, when they think of fire, they only look at the devastation that can be left behind after fire. But there are actually trees that require fire to open their cones. And an example of a type of tree that has serotonous cones um, are the giant sequoias. And they, they appropriately have the word giant in their name because they're actually the largest trees on earth. And I don't know if, um, if you notice in this picture, there's a car, there's a person, and what you're seeing is how small they are and just the relationship to just the base of these massive trees. And you find these giant sequoias on the west coast of the United, uh, United States, um, mostly in like California. California in parks like Yosemite. And what's significant about these trees is that they're threatened with extinction. And in the one of the reasons they're threatened with extinction is because of the years that conservationists prevented forest fires from moving through parks like Yosemite. And what they thought they were doing was protecting these trees. But what they didn't previously realize was these trees actually needed the fire to melt the resin off from the outside of the cone. Um, and without that fire, the cones were never allowed to open and their seeds were never allowed to re be released and new sequoias weren't allowed to germinate and replace the generations that died off. And, and so that's very significant to me, this idea that these sequoias require fire 
trauma in order for new growth to happen. And, and this is, is so significant to me because I have experienced this in my own life. Okay. And I'm going to talk more about that in a moment, but I need you to understand that most of those years that I taught um, a variety of biology courses, I taught mostly anatomy and physiology. So I taught about the human body and we can see aspects throughout multiple facets of our body, our own bodies of how immense stress triggers immense growth. Okay. So to give you a few examples, um, <laughs> Again, I love the human body, so I'm going to show you some pictures. Um, so our human skeleton, okay? What's so fascinating about our skeleton is that our bones grow based on stresses placed on it. So the more stress that you place on a bone, the stronger it grows. Like even take like the, the significant example of breaking a bone, okay? It meant trauma to a bone. When we break a bone, that bone actually grows back even stronger it actually grows back thicker than it was before to prevent a similar break in the future so that our bones can withstand the same amount of stress or more going forward so it never breaks in the same way. Okay, our bodies are amazing in that way. We see examples of this in our muscular system. So in order for our muscles to grow larger um, and stronger, they actually have to experience micro traumas. The muscle actually has to have micro tears in it in order to grow stronger. So without the micro trauma, you are not going to have that growth to follow. And one last example, and it's with our brain. Now, please be rest assured, we are not looking for an actual like physical trauma to occur to our brain to trigger growth. But think about challenging our brain with new experiences and new information. Okay. When we stress our brain with giving it new information, new experiences, it actually triggers it to grow. It grows new connections. It strengthens existing connections to create memories, okay, and to change the way that we perceive life and this information that we're taking in. And it's very exciting to me to think about all, and I could give you multiple more examples of this, of how just across different life forms, how stress encourages growth, okay? But I'd like to take this opportunity now to share, share with you how I've experienced this in my own life, okay? Um, this is a picture of me when I was 17 years old, and I, I always look at this picture with sadness, but also I can see the significance in it. You know, I, I see that it signifies all the ways that I was trying to hide when I was a teenager and, and more so all the secrets that I was keeping. I've been sexually violated by eight men and they violated me between the ages of nine and 19. And that doesn't account for the time that I was attacked from behind at knife point because I was successfully able to get the knife away from my perpetrator and run away from run away to safety. And although all of these experiences at a, as a teenager were devastating in and of, them, even in and of themselves, um, my life flew into a complete tailspin at 25 when I found the love of my life dead. Um, after that, um, my promiscuity spiraled out of control. Um, my eating disorder um, um, became really severe. Um, I was consuming so many calories 
um, that my weight reached 222 pounds and I had high cholesterol and sleep apnea before the age of 30. Um, I wasn't able to work for a period of time. So I acquired an immense amount of debt and had unpaid bills um, stacking up and collection calls constantly. And I never thought that life could get any better. And for that reason, I, I contemplated suicide on an almost daily basis. And so when I say I get that this idea um, of post-traumatic growth, I get when I hear people or see people ask me on social media, is it possible? I understand where they're coming from. I understand in many ways how absurd <laughs> the concept of post-traumatic growth can seem when you're in the depths of your despair, okay? But I need everyone who has experienced that deep level of darkness in despair, I need them to know that it's possible to thrive after trauma, not in spite of trauma, but it because of the trauma, okay? And, and it's true because I've experienced in my own life. I went from these days of not wanting to exist to experiencing life in immensely beautiful ways. And so since these days, I've gone on to um, travel across multiple countries, across five different continents. Um, so these are just some pictures of, of some of my, my beautiful experiences. And so like, this is a, a picture that I took of a leopard I saw while on safari in Africa. This is a picture I took um, at the Valley of Geysers in Kamchatka in Russia. Um, and it was purely magical. And this is a picture I took on New Year's Day while trekking through the Atacama Desert in Chile, um, a rainbow like I've never seen before. And so I show these pictures to you not to say that I believe, because I don't believe that you need to have of adventures like this in order to experience post-traumatic growth. I show these pictures for you to you so you understand what is possible after trauma. I went from thinking that life was not worth living to experiencing life in ways that I never thought was possible, okay? In addition to traveling the world, you know, I've, I've completed my PhD. Again, I, you know, I said I, I've taught on the college level for 12 years. I've changed the lives of more students than I can count. And now I use what I have experienced in my own life to help people experience life in new in more beautiful ways after their own trauma. And so my life has been completely blessed, not in spite of my trauma, but because of my trauma. I know that I not would not be where I am, that I wouldn't be where I am today without my most painful experiences. And I believe very much so that our ability to grow is directly proportional proportional to the amount of pain that we experience in life. And so I, I, because I believe it, I've experienced immense pain, but I've also experienced immense beauty. And, you know, as I have continued to progress forward after my trauma and I've gotten more distance from my pain, now my growth is directly proportional to the size of my goals. And so to continue that pattern of growth and transformation, I set greater and greater goals for myself over time. And so I'm completely reinventing myself every year as I continue to exist on earth. And I, there is no part of me that wants to go back to any previous version of my life because as I continue to grow and change and thrive in life, 
I just live life in beautiful ways that just were not accessible to me before. Okay. And so what I want you to know is that it is possible to emerge stronger from your trauma than you ever were before. And, and this is one of my, a picture of one of my most magical experiences in life. And it was, um, this is, um, I'm in the Caucasus mountains in Russia, and this is me in my flight suit right before I experienced paragliding for the first time. And let me tell you, if you haven't experienced paragliding is, is really uh, a really truly magical experience. And, and I always keep my arms out like this um, when I am experiencing life in these ways. And I often do this pose when I'm um, summiting, when I've summited a huge mountain um, or any just really um, difficult challenge. I often put my arms out like this and, and what it symbolizes to me is how free I feel. You know, for years I felt trapped in an, an invisible cage and I just thought it wasn't possible to escape, but I have escaped. And now um, all of that darkness that I experienced um, is now my fuel to move forward. And so, you know, I'm gonna go back to this previous picture. I, I like to say that day, always follows night. And so if you are experiencing periods of darkness, I want you to each morning remind yourself that the sun came up, that light always follows darkness. And so even if your period of darkness has persisted for maybe even years of your life, I want you to know that the darkness can and will end. You just need to keep moving forward and, um, and, and keep in your mind stories like mine. And, and I encourage you to seek out stories of others that will remind you that, that it's that hope is possible and healing is possible. And that transformation is possible after trauma. Okay, I wish you well, and I encourage you to reach out to me with any questions along the way. Thank you for listening.